Let us bow our heads as we pray. Can we just talk to the Lord in a few minutes? The Lord, as we have gathered this morning to listen to your word, the Lord, that you may speak to our hearts this morning, that you may open our eyes to see you, that you may open our ears to hear you, that you may open our hearts to understand, that you may teach us by yourself, O God, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning once again. Uh, good afternoon, sorry. Um, today it's Youth Sunday and I just want to appreciate um, the authority of the church for this privilege today. Um, as we might have already seen the uh, program today, it's termed Call to Priesthood. And I just want to um, sh- share a few things with us in the next few minutes and uh, as we have heard the word priesthood um, what might come to our hearts might be the word priest and we probably have you know seen priests around um, churches around us or in other faiths as well and we probably know in our minds what exactly the meaning of what a priest of who a priest might be maybe someone who ministers to to God, or but in general terms, it just means someone who officiates or who ministers to a certain um, deity or God. But in regards to our gathering today, we'll be talking about our priesthood unto God. And the first thing I want us to know is that God desires a nation of priests. And as we read from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 6, um, if we can read that chapter together. One to go, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And then First Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. So as we can see from these two um, verses, God has always had it in mind that he will create a nation of priests where each and every one of us can have access to God. Um, As an individual, we would not need to gather, you know, to to wait on just one person to be an intermediary between God and us. We all have the access to God through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and through the sacrifice that he has made with his own flesh, with his own blood. And... When we talk about priesthood, in the first service, Pastor explained several things about what we need or what we need to, uh, um, to effect- effectively practice as priests because each and every one of us, every man and woman, both old and young, we have been called to be priests. God has called us a holy nation, a royal priesthood. So it is left for us to now begin to work in these realities. And what if we read through the book of um, the Old Testament, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, what we will see in peculiarity is the fact that there is a priest, and then God specifically gave instructions as to how they carry out the priestly engagement. And we see that there are priestly garments, and it is very, very detailed, the way God instructed the garments to be made. And then we might have had a scripture that says, let your garments be always white, and let not your head lack oil. So we, we can begin to, to think about how that also relates to us. Another thing is the temple or the tabernacle, how that God also gave specific instructions down to detail, to the measurements as to how the temple should be. And then the altar, where the sacrifices are being made, and then the priest's uprightness or sanctification. Part of the priestly garments, they have like the, the, a crown. And on the crown is written, holiness unto the, God, or unto the Lord. So it is very important that as priests, we need to understand. In the first service, we talk about consecrating ourselves unto the Lord as priests. So God is the one that sanctifies us, that cleanses us, that um, purifies us to be able to use us for, as for his own will. And then the sacrifice. So, how this relates to us, so what I've read to us are excerpts from the Old Testament, and how does this relate to us in 
this new covenant that Jesus Christ has uh, mediated for us. The very interesting thing is that the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, if you can have the, the particular verse on the screen, it talks about how that we are the temple of the Lord. And then when you begin to think about it, we are the priests and then we are the temple. You begin to think about how can these two things be possible at the same time. You know, um, the, the reason why we are the temple of the Lord is because God wants to dwell in us so that you will not have to uh, probably travel to Jerusalem or travel to the Holy Land to be able to commune with God. All that you will only have to maybe come to church to be able to commune with God. You can sit you know, in, the, in the comfort of your, of your house at the bus station. You can sit there and begin to talk to God right there because God indwells us. And the reason why, um, one of the reasons why Jesus Christ came was as part of our reconciliation to God is to also make us ready to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit so that the person of God can dwell in us. So in that light, as priests, we can begin to perform our priestly um, our obligations by relating to that person of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit, that um, indwells us. And then, as we have said earlier on, that we are priests unto God. So, um, one part of my definition of what a priest, of who a priest is, is that someone who ministers to a God. There are different priests. There could be a priest to maybe Zeus or uh, Poseidon or every other God. But what, what separates this, um, our priesthood from all those other priests is because we have an order. Every priesthood has its own order. So our, the order of our priesthood is according to Jesus Christ. If we read the book of um, Hebrews, I think chapter 4 now, talks about how he is our high priest. So according to that order, we are also priests according to the order of Jesus Christ. So he has laid the foundation for us and then we can begin to follow in that part as well. So we are priests unto God to minister unto God, to, to, to worship him, to, to do his will, to ensure that um, when the disciples asked the, uh, Jesus Christ to teach them how to pray, one of the prayers was that, let thy kingdom come, let your will be done. So part of the reasons why we pray uh, we perform our priesthood is to make sure that the will of God as it is in heaven is so done on earth. So if we don't perform our priestly activities, what we will see is that there will be a disconnection between what God intends to do here on earth and then what is actually happening. As we can see obviously in our world today, there's a lot of decadence, there's a lot of um, deviation from the principle of God and it doesn't look as though there is an effect of our Christianity in our society. It's because we have departed from the way of priesthood. And most of us have you know, ventured into what pertains to us personally. You know, we pray, we ask for what we want from God personally. But we don't really think about what God intends to do in our day and time. And the only way where we can see God, you know, when God can be... Uh, uh, um, can be seen in our day and time is that we begin to perform our priestly activities such that we begin to commune with God. Um, the, in the, uh, I can't remember this particular verse, but I think it's in Habakkuk. It says, I will stand and see what he will say. So we need to be able to stand in our watch and wait and see what God will say to us. You know, when, we, when you begin to pray, sometimes I, you probably don't have a prayer point. You're just praying. In that prayer, God can begin to tell you about someone, maybe in the church, to pray for you know, a brother, to pray for a sister. We are already performing our priesthood. You know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, I'm not saying we cannot pray about our needs. That Of course, we can ask God for what we need. But then in our prayer time, God can begin to trust us with what he intends to do. And God said the same thing about Abraham. He said, will I do a thing without telling my friend Abraham, God could trust him about what he intended to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham was able to perform his priestly duties by negotiating how far 
or to, to try to negotiate what should happen there. You know, he started to negotiate from 50 to down to 10 people. If there are 10 people, 10 righteous men in this place, would the Lord not destroy them? And we see that he was able to, in that same way, we can begin to grow in our priesthood, to begin to talk to God and see what God intends to do in our day and time. And then we have here, um, we are living sacrifices. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it talks about how we should present ourselves as living sacrifices unto God. And then when you think about it, the statement sounds very contradictory because how can a sacrifice also be alive? The reason is that we are living, but then we, 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 we consecrate and we give ourselves in totality to God such that we don't live for ourselves as Paul said in the book of Galatians that says, the, the, the life that I live now is not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So we are not living for our own, our own ambition. We are not living for our own uh, you know, selfish interest, but we are living for the will of God. Hallelujah. And then how do we engage our priesthood? In the first service, we talk about ministering unto the Lord. And then we engage our priesthood by giving ourselves to, be, to the obligations of our priesthood by ministering unto the Lord. Now, there are obligations that pertain to priestly duties. In that, uh, you need to, we talked about sanctification, uh, consecration, and then in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it says, they, as they ministered and fasted. So in, that, in, in the context of that chapter, the disciples were praying unto the Lord, waiting on the Lord to receive instructions. And what happened while they ministered was that God gave specific instructions as to what they should do in, you know, in their journey. In the same way, we need to be able to learn to wait on the Lord to receive the instructions. But the, the fact remains that these instructions will not come if we don't begin to build our altar, if we don't begin to perform our priestly duties before God, and then to wait and receive instructions from him, and then to take advantage of the works that Christ has accomplished for us. You know, when we begin to pray, you know, when, when we set our mind as, I will now start, I will start praying consistently. That is when we discover how difficult it is to pray. Because by the time you go maybe two or three days, you, you discover that you, are, you become busy or you become a bit lazy, sleep begins to catch up with you, and a lot of things begin to happen. It is because we probably might not be taking advantage of everything that Christ has, uh, has laid down or given to us freely. And how do I mean with, uh, with this? We need to be able to, for example, as you approach the the presence of God, you need to be able to know unto whom we are approaching as our father, right? You approach God as a father and then by the blood of Jesus. And the book of Hebrews also explained that we approach by the blood and God, um, Christ has made a new and a living way through his flesh. So we need to be able to understand what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary and then we begin to engage these realities to perform our priesthood. Another challenge we might find is that the devil might come up with you know, a lot of uh, guilty conscience and a lot of things begin to come up in your mind how that, you know, how that we have seen some years ago or some weeks back. These are the obstacles that the devil play, put in place so that we would not perform our priestly duties. And when we begin to realize what Christ has done, it becomes much more easier to be able to perform these duties. And to, to conclude, what I would say is that God has called all of us. None of us is exempted from these realities. God has called us to be able to perform these duties. As husbands and wives, parents and children, God has given us the responsibility to be able to engage him and receive instructions from him so that his will in heaven can be done on earth. Can we bow our heads to pray this evening? Can you just talk to God that, Lord, I bring myself to you this, this afternoon. I have come to register myself as a priest. I understand that you desire that I be a priest unto you. 
Moses said in the book of Exodus, he said, I wish that all of God's people are prophets. It is the will of God that we have access to him, to be able to know his will, to be able to minister unto him, to be able to learn of him. Can you talk to the Lord this afternoon and say, Lord, I bring myself to you. I've come to register myself in the school of priesthood to learn how to perform my priestly duties effectively in the name of Jesus so that your will in heaven can be done in my life, in my family, and in my society right here on earth in the name of Jesus.